afternoon, everyone. Uh, it falls to me to welcome our visitors, our regular members, and our friends, those who are on uh, using the Zoom platform, as well as those who are watching us through our live stream on YouTube. Uh, let us begin by, uh, let me read something for you. Uh, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, give thanks unto the God of gods, uh, and to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. For him who alone doeth great wonders, by his wisdom made the heavens, and stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great light, the sun to rule the day and the moon, and stars to rule by night, for his mercy endureth forever. Remember us in our low estate, and hath redeemed us from our enemies, who giveth food to all flesh. O oh, give thanks to the God of the heavens for his mercy with the use of hymn number 604. Sabbath to each one of you. Happy Sabbath. Yeah, thank you. And the scripture portion for our meditation is taken from Genesis chapter 7, verses 1 and 16. And I'm reading it from the King James Version. And it reads, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Verse 16. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him, 
and the Lord shut him in. May the Lord add his blessings to the scripture portion we have now read. Amen. Shall we seek reverently God? Let, let us take our position to give thanks unto God. Let us pray. Our merciful Father in heaven, once again, thank you, Lord, for all your blessings that you have bestowed upon throughout this pandemic time and given us this beautiful Sabbath morning where we all thy children come to as a platform in this Zoom prayer meeting to give you thanks and praise to thy name. Thank you for the provisions that you have given to each and every one of us to come unto thy feet, to praise you and adore you, and to submit ourselves unto thee. Especially pray for the people who are in sick, who are seeking thy healing hand upon them. Please visit them and stretch for thy hand upon them and give them the normal health that they need in this time. As we heard, Sister Smith is not well. Please stretch for thy healing hand upon her and bring her normal health so that she can come next Sabbath into the prayer and give you a witness that you have done marvelous things in her lives. Mm. I especially pray for all our young children in our church. Bless them and guide them, Lord. Help them to choose you. Help them to put you first in everything that they do in this pandemic time. Help them to listen thy voice and come unto thee and worship thee. Please be with them as they start their school. Give them the wisdom knowledge from above to choose which is good and which is bad in this academic time and in, for their future. I pray for our entire church members who have joined the Zoom meeting and the people who are unable to join this prayer session today. Bless them and guide them, Lord. Help us to submit ourselves and live a life that is pleasing to thee. I pray for all our beloved churches around this country, around the world. You have chosen this remnant church in a purpose. Help our church leaders and church members to fulfill the task that we have given to each and every one of us in these last days. Pray for our speaker, Pastor Christopher. Bless him and guide him, Lord. Thank you for choosing him today to sp speak to us, to this Bilston Church. Thank you for giving him good health and strength. Thank you for being with him this time. As he's going to break the bread of life, anoint him with the Holy Spirit, whatever he speaks, the church relies from the throne of grace, not only to hear and practice 
in our daily life the message that he is going to speak to us. Bless his family, bless his children and grandchildren. Use them in the mighty service in the days to come. Thank you for his service towards the church. Thank you for speaking to us through, to, through him. And once again, commit each and every one of us into the care and keeping and give us these Sabbath blessings. Help us to decrease ourselves and increase you in everything that we do. This ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. For, for uh, where are all the children today? I, can't, I can see one, two, um, a few children, okay. For our story for today, We'll be listening to a story about a jungle and, and a monkey in the jungle. And all right, this was a very, very, very nice time in the jungle. It was a springtime and all the animals were so happy in the jungle because there was so much water and not so much sun, but there was sun too. And, and the animals were all in the water and they, they all gathered there to keep themselves cool. And the little elephant, he used to splash some water all over the animals too, and they enjoyed it. And they all drank the water and they, they just, they, they were just full of life during the spring. But springtime of, um, in the jungle doesn't last for the whole year. And the sun usually takes over and the sun rules the, rules the jungle for most of the year. And when the sun comes out day by day, the trees start withering and the trees, they start losing their leaves and the branches and, and, and the plants and everything. They become dry because there's no water. And one of these monkeys, he was sitting in the tree and he asked the elephant, Mr. Elephant, can you please spray some water in me? It, it's so hot today and, and, I'd, and I'd love some water to be splashed in my face. And the elephant says, oh no, you know what? I've, I've only been spraying mud for the past three weeks and I can't do anything about it because there's no water. And high up above in the trees, the giraffe, the hornbill, and they're talking to each other. And the giraffe was saying, that sun is getting hotter and hotter every day. And the hornbill said, yeah, that sun, it, 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 it looks like as if it is fire. It's almost burning us. And it flew up high into the sky to see what was happening. And it saw that there was some smoke far away from where they were. And he knew immediately that if there's smoke, there's gonna be fire. And he went down to tell everyone else. And when he went down, the giraffe, he saw, he, he was tall enough so he could reach up his neck and he saw, and he said, yeah, there's fire, there's fire. And the elephant said, hmm, I can smell it. And the rhinoceros, he, he, he couldn't see up, up there, but he could feel it. So he said, mm, this doesn't feel nice. We need to get out of here. And the elephant said, there's only one safe place that we can be at now. And that is the great rock, but we need to travel a, a long way to get there. So we all need to run to the great rock now. So they all started moving to the great rock. And the monkey, he climbed up on the giraffe's neck to search for his cousin who's been missing, who was missing from that morning. And he kept looking around, but he couldn't find his cousin. And all the animals, they started running and as they were running, the sound of thunder echoed through the forest. And the sound of thunder was from the running from the hoofs of all the animals because there were so many animals. And that's where the sound of thunder came from. And far away, miles away from all the other animals was Coco the monkey, who was Toto's cousin. And he was so close to the great rock, but he didn't go to the great rock. Instead, he found a tree near the great rock where he spotted some honey. And there were some bees that were also leaving the tree because the bees knew that the fire was gonna come there soon. But now Coco, he had a sweet tooth and he loved anything sweet. So he stopped there and he thought to himself, now this place is going to be my place for the next few days and I'm going to eat all this honey before I can get out of here. And all the animals, they were all running 
and Toto was on the giraffe's neck and he, he was saying to the animals, Mr. Zebra, Mr. Zebra, have you seen my cousin Toto? Mr. Deer, Mr. Deer, Mr. Ostrich, have you seen my cousin Coco? No. The, the zebra said, no, we haven't. We haven't seen him around. The deer said, we haven't seen him around either. And then he, as they were moving, he saw the hippopotamus and the rhinos and he said, have you seen my cousin Coco? I'm looking for him. Now the hippos, they were traveling slow, so they didn't want to answer. They just kept moving on. But the rhino, he looked back and he said, no, we haven't seen him either. And all the animals, there were so many animals that set off. So many hundreds of animals, they were all running towards the great stone. And what was Coco doing all the while? He was sitting and eating his honey. Mm -hmm. And a rhinoceros came by as he was passing the tree. And he said, oh, is that you, Coco? Your, your cousin has been looking for you all over the place. Why don't you come with me and we can all go to the great rock? Now, Coco thought that the rhino was trying to steal his honey. So he said, no, I'm not going to come with you. You can go on. You're just here to steal my honey. So the rhino knew that there was no arguing with him. So he just walked away and he, he started back on his route to go to the great rock. And the elephants, as they were running, they came across two cousins of Coco and Toto. And these two monkeys were so tired because they had been running for so long. So they were sitting on a small rock and the elephant said, you get on my tusk and we'll run, we'll, we'll carry you all the way to the great rock. And Toto caught up with them. He said, cousins, have you seen my cousin Coco? I haven't seen him all day and I, I, I don't know where he is. And these two cousins said, we haven't seen him. We don't know where he could be, but maybe he's gone to the great rock already. And they were all, all, all going to the rock and they all had to pass this tree and two big tall giraffes, they saw the monkey there, they saw the monkey nicely relaxing on the tree, and they said, Coco, you must be the one that Toto has been looking around in the jungle for. You, uh, do you want to come with us? We're, we're going to the Great Rock, and you can just sit on our backs, maybe, and we'll take you there. Now, do you think Coco wanted to go? No. He said, no, I'm not going. And all the animals, as they passed by, he said, no, I'm not coming with you. I'm not coming with you either. I'm not coming with you. I'm just going to sit here and finish my honey. And then the two cousins of Toto and Coco, they saw Coco on the tree and they shouted to him, Coco, Coco, we finally found you. Why don't you come and sit on the elephant? We're having such a nice ride here. You come and we'll all go to the Great Rock together. Coco was now angry. He, he definitely thought for sure that these two monkeys were just trying to get him away from the tree to steal his honey. So he said, no, I'm going to be here. You, you go on and I'll follow you later. Maybe, maybe, maybe when I when I'm done with this. So they went away too. And then Toto came sitting on the giraffe's back and he said, Coco, Coco, finally I found you. And he went all the way to the tree and he reached out his hand and he said, Coco, come with me, come with me. Let's, uh, let's sit on the giraffe and let's go to the great rock and we'll be safe. Now Coco definitely thought that Toto was just trying to cheat him and steal him off his honey. He said, no. I'm not going to come. I'm just going to lie down here and I'm going to eat my honey in peace. And the giraffe said, Coco, now is not the time for you to be sitting and enjoying your honey. Now is the time for us to be running away from danger to get to safety first. And Toto also said, please, please, cousin, if you don't leave now, you may not be able to leave in time before the fire comes and engulfs this whole place. And then Coco, he was so angry, he said, you are just trying to steal my honey. Go away from here. And then Toto and the giraffe, they, they knew that it was going to be too late, so they started running. And just as they left, the fire came and engulfed everything. And as they got to the Great Rock, they saw that not as many animals were there. There were so many animals that started, but there were very few here at the Great Rock. And, and Coco asked, uh, Toto asked the giraffe, what happened to everybody else? And then the giraffe said, maybe they were all busy doing something else. Or maybe they got stuck somewhere and they didn't make it here. But the few that had actually made it there, they were so relieved that they were out of the fire. And Toto, as he looked back at the forest, at the jungle, he realized that everybody who hadn't come from there, everybody who, who was stuck with something else or doing something else that they liked, didn't make it out. And he also remembered something that the giraffe had told him. The giraffe told him and Coco that now is the time to get to safety. Now is the time to get out of danger. Not later, because later you may not have the time. And the Bible tells us of the story of a rich man who had barns and barns of grain and he wanted to enjoy everything later. But then God told him that night, 
foolish man, did you not know that tonight your soul was going to be taken? Now the Bible also tells us, seek the Lord while he may be found, call on him while he is near. The, the moral of the story that I'd like to share with everyone is that now is the time for us to be listening to our parents and to Jesus. Not later, not, not tomorrow, but now. If we need to get to heaven, we need to listen to our mommies and daddies and to Jesus and to the Bible now. And if we don't do that now, we may not find a, find a place in heaven later. So what is the moral of our story? Or, well, well we, we got, you wanna come here? Okay, the moral of the story is that we need to listen to Jesus and to the Bible and to our parents now and do what he says. So, so that's the end of our story for today. Um, does anyone want to pray for us today? Does anyone want to pray? If you want, if you do want to pray, if you, you can just unmute your mic and pray. Uh, okay, uh, let's yeah. pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for, yeah. thank you for being with us uh, throughout the week, and uh, thank you for the story and help us to um, follow it and understand it. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Brother Bobby, for um, sending us that um, children's story. It falls on me to um, welcome the um, speaker for today, who is um, Pastor Prabhadas Pitta. Now, you probably know him as Pastor Christopher, because that's in fact um, what his signature there. Um, we normally refer to him as Pastor Christopher. We give him his full name today, Pastor Christopher Prabhadas Pitta who is not a stranger to us. He's been at Bilston um, on a few occasions previously. I contacted him not so long ago, and um, I think he sort of forgot with COVID and everything else. Um, everybody's lost sense of um, directions and time, but um, we were pleased that he'd um, um, accepted the opportunity to preach today. Um, Pastor, um, Pastor Christopher is a minister um, he's been a minister in India for um, quite some time and for 10 years he was um, minister at the Central English Church in Bangalore which is um, South India. Normally when Pastor Christopher comes to us he's here with his family. I haven't seen his wife today but um, she's probably nearby but um, certainly um, we've seen his son Bobby who gave the children's story and um, his um, daughter-in-law Pretty. Um, and you will also have heard and seen um, Bobby and um, Pretty's um, three and a half year old um, son. We're very pleased to have you worshipping and fellowshipping today and may the Lord bless you as, um, as, as you minister to us. But before we hear Pastor Christopher, um, we'll be favoured with a song of meditation by his son Bobby and daughter-in-law. The song that we're singing this morning is entitled, What a Day That Will Be. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, and no more tears to dim the eye, all is peace forevermore, on that happy golden shore, what a day, a glorious day that will be, what a day that will be, when my Jesus I shall see, when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and leads me to the promised land, what a day, glorious day. That will be. be no sorrows there, and no more burdens to bear, and no more sickness, and no more pain, and no more parting of the and forever I will be with the one. Who died for me? Oh, what a day, the glorious day that will be. What a day that will be. 
day. When my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face. The one who saves me by his grace. When he takes me by my hand. And leads me to the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be. When my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face. The one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and leads me to the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. What a day, glorious day. That will be. Amen. 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 So greetings to you, dear brothers and sisters, once again, and uh, happy Sabbath to each one of you once again. I want to thank uh, Elder uh, Clarence for inviting me to preach to the believers at uh, Wilson Church and the uh, beautiful introduction and the, and the kind words that he spoke about me and my family. I want to thank you once again for extending me the invitation to, to speak to the believers at uh, Bilston Church. I always consider uh, it a privilege and a pleasure to worship with uh, believers at Bilston Church. And uh, it's, it's again, uh, I consider this a privilege to speak to you uh, this afternoon. Uh, I thank God for his wonderful mercies toward each one of us. Uh, despite the difficulties and the challenges that we have been going through, this year long uh, lockdown, he has been very good to us. And this reminds me of one of God's wonderful promises found in Lamentations chapter three, verses 22 and 23, where the prophet testifies. It reads, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Praise God for his wonderful mercies toward each one of us. Let's bow our heads uh, before we begin our meditation. A merciful Father in heaven, as I present the message that you have called me to share with the believers at uh, Bilston Church, that, I, that you would anoint my thoughts and words, that they may strengthen us in our Christian experience, edify us, and help us in our day-to-day -day Christian living and prepare us for your soon return. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. This morning, my message is about uh, a lockdown, a spiritual lockdown, or a spiritual shutdown. And my message was inspired by a news item which I had uh, read on my phone app in March 1, 2019, two years ago. And this news item profoundly impressed me with a spiritual lesson which I would like to share with you uh, in the last part of my sermon this afternoon. This news headline was in the headlines 
in the papers all over the world is about a, a newly married couple that was stranded by a cruise ship. And uh, this story influenced me to entitle my sermon as Shut In or uh, Shut Out. And my sermon is uh, in three parts. There are uh, three shutdown scenarios. Uh, uh, and uh, we will consider the lessons that God has in store for us. Three lockdown scenarios. There was a lockdown and a shutdown or a shut door and an open door in Noah's time. There was an open door and a shut door in the parable of the ten virgins. And there is a shut door and an open door in the news story that I have uh, mentioned to you a little while ago. And I'm going to talk to you about uh, the spiritual shut doors. The first shut door is found in Genesis chapter 7, verse 16. The spiritual shut door, the first spiritual shut door. I would like you to open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 7, verses 1 and 16. And before that, we will consider chapter 6 and verse 22. We will start with verse 22. But it says, thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. God commanded Noah to preach to the people a message of warning, the message of judgment, the 120 long years doing this job, and at the same time, building a ship that would accommodate both the animals and uh, the people who would be willing to come into it. And then verse 22 says that Noah did according to all that God had commanded him, so did he. And chapter seven and verse one, and the Lord said unto Noah, come thou and all the house into the ark. And for I have seen righteous, for, for I have seen righteous before me in this generation. And verse 16. And they went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in. The Lord shut him in. And here is where my title comes alive. The Lord shut him in. God shut him in. Why was he shut in? We find that Noah was called to preach the message of warning, the message of doom and deliverance to the people who are living in wickedness. And the ark was completed. And just before the flood came, seven days before the flood came, the Lord called Noah and his family to enter in. And during these seven days, God in a miraculous way brought the animals into the ark. It was a wonderful sight, a spectacular sight for these people who had gathered around that sight. They watched in wonder as the animals were getting into the ship, getting into the ark. But none of them was convinced. None of them was convinced to get into the ark along with Noah. While Noah was preaching, they mocked him, they scoffed at him, they called him mad, they called him fanatic, who is out of his mind. But Noah 
without being discouraged, he preached for 120 long years. He did his job, and now God calls him into the ark, along with the animals. They were all in, and God shut him in. God shut him in. And the world was shut outside. Now we will consider why. Why were they shut out? Why were these people shut out? There are several reasons why these people were shut out. The reason number one, it was their own choice. The reason why they were shut out was because of their own choice. They have only to blame themselves. God says, for God's allowed the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Noah preached, pleaded with them to come into the ark that they may be saved from the deluge. But no one listened. No one cared. They did not believe because they thought Noah was a madman. They thought Noah's message was a fable, an idle tale. And they thought that Noah was foolish in preaching such a strange message to them. So because of their unbelief, they would not enter into the ship, enter into the ark, and thus they were shut out. Number one, the reason, number one, for their being shut out was, it was their own choice, deliberate choice. Moses, before departing from this world, before he left this world, before God called him, before God took him away, his final parting words to the people were this, Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. He says, he appeals to them, I have said before you life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life. And these people, unfortunately, they chose death instead of life. They would not want to get into the ark to be saved along with Noah and the animals. The second, the, another reason is while Noah was preaching, while the animals were getting in, they were very busy in a riotous revelry. Lusts of the flesh. They have no time for God. They were godless, wicked generation. God was not in their thoughts. They were thinking of evil. Lusts of the flesh filled their hearts. They were indulging in unrestrained pleasures and indulgences. Indulging in this sinful pleasures, filled with unbelief. Therefore, they had no time. They were not conscious of what was happening and what would happen to them. So they chose not to enter into the ark and they were shut out. Unbelief also was one of the first sins of our first parents. When the devil came with the temptation and told her, oh, you won't die. God is not uh, so harsh to kill you, to destroy you. He did not uh, create you only to destroy you. He doesn't mean what he said. He won't die. And Eve fell for this lie and she believed the lie of Satan against the clear command of God. So as a result, they were driven from the beautiful paradise. They were driven from the direct communion, fellowship with the creator, and they brought sin and woe and suffering along humanity, all because of unbelief. We also find another example of unbelief, the children of Israel, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 long years, but many of the 
older generation, people of the older generation who started from uh, Egypt, they all perished in the wilderness and they did not reach the promised land. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse 19, it says, they could not enter in because of unbelief. They could not enter in because of their unbelief, because they were complaining, complaining and grumbling against Moses and against God. And God put them down in the wilderness and they died and they could not see the promised land. And we find also Jesus saying about the wickedness of these people in Noah's time, describing the condition of the people before the flood, Jesus says, for as in the day that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. They knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Seven days before the flood came, the door was still open. There was still chance for these people to make the decision to come into the ark, to be saved. They saw all the animals get into the ark. They saw Noah and his family get into the ark and get settled in the ark. But none of them would go in because they didn't believe that God would ever destroy this world with the flood, with water. And so they remained outside, continued to enjoy the lusts of the flesh. They despised the message of warning that God has sent to them through Noah. Thus they were lost. Now today, same thing could happen to each one of us if we harbor unbelief in our lives. If we do not believe in the word of God, the same fate awaits each one of us. The prayer should be for us today. Our prayer, sincere prayer should be, Lord, help us overcome the evil heart of unbelief. Hebrews 3.12. And uh, like the father of the a child possessed, who said to Jesus, help me, help thou my unbelief. Mark 9.24. May the Lord give us a believing heart to obey his word that we may be shut in like Noah, safe from the corruptions of the world. Now this is the first shutdown and why people were shut out and why Noah and his family were shut in Noah was shut in because of his faith, his trust, his confidence in God. He did all that the Lord has commanded him to do. And he was shut in, shut in, safe from all the corruptions of the world and the coming deluge. And he was saved along with his family. Now we go on to the second shut door. This shadow is about uh, the parable of the ten virgins. Another beautiful and well-loved stories of the New Testament. These virgins, all ten of them, represent the professed Christians. They're all with one purpose, waiting for the bridegroom. Presently, they all had the uh, lamps in their hands. And they were at the same place, like we are in the same place, worshiping at the uh, same church, like all of us. And there's no apparent difference amongst them. But the tarrying time exposed the true character of the virgins. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slept. But when the Cry was heard that the bridegroom is here. Come and welcome the bridegroom. They all woke up from their sleep. But the five wise virgins 
They trim their lamps, made their lights glow brighter. With joy and happiness, they welcomed the bridegroom. They went in with the bridegroom into the marriage. And the Bible says the door was shut. Here we see the second door which was shut. Why was this door shut against them? And why were they shut out? Remember, these virgins, five foolish virgins, were not unbelievers, but they were professed Christians like you and me. Good and active church members. We take active part in the church. We serve the community. They have a good name in the church. They, are, they have leadership in the church. But there is something wrong with them. There's something wrong with them. Jesus calls them foolish in his parable. Why? Why did Jesus call them foolish? Because they have no forethought for the future emergency. They let their lamps to flicker and die, and they had no extra oil to replenish, and they were unprepared. So when the bridegroom came, they trimmed their lamps, but their lamps were already dying out, and they died. And in order to let them glow again, they need to replenish their lamps, but they had no oil. And therefore, they could not welcome the bridegroom and they were shut out. We know according to the symbolism of the oil and the lamp, the oil represents the Holy Spirit and the light, the word of God. And we need both the word of God and the Spirit of God to help us live victorious lives in this world. The Holy Spirit to illuminate the word and help us live a, a victorious life and help us apply the word of God to our daily lives without which we are dead Christians. So the first reason why they were shut out was because of their foolishness because they did not have a forethought for the future emergency. They did not have the oil of the spirit, which would help them to understand the scripture in a better way and to apply it to their daily lives. And Jesus speaking uh, to the The Pharisees, he says to them, These people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their hearts, the heart is far from me. In other words, another problem why they were not able to enter into the wedding was because of their hypocrisy. They are Christians by name. They are, uh, they are active in the church. They believe the same as the other, other believers, but they have something wrong in their lives. They were hypocrites. By name, for namesake, they are Christians, but they have no Christ-like characters repro reproduced in their lives. Therefore, Jesus said to these people, he says, these people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, Matthew 5, 17, which is also found in Isaiah chapter 59, verse 13. In the message to the church of Sadis, we find the same admonition, same rebuke uh, to the, the people at church 
in Sardis, where it says, Thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. The problem with these foolish virgins was that there is no genuine Christian experience in their lives. They were Christians by profession, but there is no Christ-like virtues reproduced in their lives. Am I like this? Are you like these foolish virgins, Christian by name, but no Christ-likeness reproduced in our lives? And another reason why they were shut out was because they were not able to make their calling an election show. They were called, they were invited with the other 10 virgins, the rest of the virgins but they were not able to make the calling an election show. Matthew 22, verse 14, Jesus says, for many are called, but few are chosen. Yes, we are all called as Adventists, as Christians. We are chosen by God, we are called by God, and we have accepted the, the calling. But how many of us are sure that we will make it, we'll make our calling an election show. Therefore, Peter admonishes us. Therefore, give diligence to your calling and election show. Make your calling and election show. Second Peter 1, 10. Peter says, give diligence to make your calling an election show. Are we making or calling an election show? And most important lesson we learn from the five foolish virgins is this, the admonition from Jesus. He says, watch therefore, for you know not neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. The second shut door of the five foolish virgins was because of their foolishness. They were foolish in not being prepared for the future emergency. And secondly, they were hypocritical, hypocritical in their lives. They pretended to be what they were not. There's no genuine Christianity. There's no Christ-like virtues reproduced in their lives. So they have no place with the, the wedding. So they were shut out. It was a sad condition for them to be in. I hope you and I will not be found in the situation when the bridegroom would say, I do not know who you are, I'm sorry. May God help us not to be like the five foolish virgins who are shut out from participating in that wedding and enjoying the communion with the bridegroom. And the last shut door we have is from the story I was talking about in the beginning of my uh, sermon. It's about a celebrity couple was stranded by a cruise ship. This incident happened on February 15, uh, 2019. Maria Gonzalez, an actress and a TV presenter, and her husband, Alessandro, they were on a seven day honeymoon trip on a board uh, ship. Uh, called the Symphony of the Seas of the Royal Caribbean International. This is the largest passenger ship in the world with a capacity to carry 6,680 passengers, a great ship indeed. On the sixth day of the trip, this ship was docked at Nassau port and all the passengers were given 
an all aboard time of 3.30 p.m. They're all given this time that 3.30 uh, p.m. they should be in the ship on board. And at 4.15 p.m., the gangway was removed and the doors was closed. And the couple arrived five minutes later. That was about 4.20 p.m. And when they arrived, they frantically waved their arms in hopes the ship would stop. And screaming desperately, no, as the vessel moved away. After three minutes, the ship starts blaring its departure horn, signaling a final goodbye to the port, and the helpless couple were left stranded. Now here we see the last shadow and why this young couple was shut out from this a ship. This story is very similar to the details of Noah's Ark. There was an open door and the shut door and accountability of the people, individual accountability of the people there in both these accounts, even in the story, the parable of the of 10 virgins. These people, this couple was shut out because, not because they were unbelievers or hypocrites like the people of Noah's day or in the parable of the 10 virgins. They were genuine passengers with a valid seven day trip ticket. And they were with the other passengers for the six days. But on the last day of the trip back, they missed out and they couldn't make out. Why? Why were they not in time? What held them back? Why were they stranded? Why were they shut out? There are several reasons why this couple was stranded. First, the failure to read the instructions. At the port, Nassau, they were all given an all aboard time of 3.30 p.m. They should be in, they are required to be in by 3.30 p.m. on that particular day but they arrived late. Why? Because they assumed, wrongly assumed that the ship would leave on the same schedule as at other ports. They had their own time. They thought the ship would leave on the same schedule as at other ports wrongly assumed, and they never read the instructions that were given to them. Are we following the guidelines that God has given to us in his word, the instructions that he has given to us about our salvation, about our daily Christian lives? In Proverbs 14, chapter, verse 12, we read, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. It is very dangerous to assume our own ways. It's very dangerous to imagine our own ways. It is very dangerous to interpret the scriptures in our own way. This young couple thought the ship would leave according to their own time the time that they have imagined. And they were laid by about 50 minutes. When they saw the ship sailing away, they started screaming, asking them to stop the ship. But 
the ship wouldn't stop for them. They were helpless, they were stranded. Now, what about us today? We are also waiting for the divine, the heavenly ship to sail away very soon from the portals of the sinful world. And God is calling each one of us to enter into this heavenly ark. Are we delaying? Are we saying it's not a time to enter into the ship? They presume, this young couple presume that it is not time for us to be in the ship. We still have a lot more time. We have still have a lot more time to shop and go sightseeing. Yes, it is very dangerous to presume. Presume on God's word. It makes us to think that God is not particular about what he says. It makes us think that God would adjust things according to our conveniences. It makes us think that God delays his coming indefinitely. So let's not worry. We still have a lot of time to prepare for his coming. It also makes us think that God is too loving, too kind, too loving, too kind to punish us severely. So let us indulge in our sinful activities, sinful pleasures. These are all from the devil's lies. Our prayer should be at the David's prayer. Keep thy servant also from the presumptuous sins. Presumption is a very dangerous sin. Presumption is a very dangerous sin. It will keep us out of heaven. It will keep us out of heaven. It will destroy our Christian lives. Therefore, we should be very careful about presuming about God's word, presuming against the clear commands of God. There is a the contrasting analogy with the uh, Noah's Ark. In the Noah's Ark, eight people went in and they were saved, while the rest of the world was lost. And in this ship, the modern ship, along with this couple, there were six others who made the same mistake. They also thought the ship would uh, uh, leave at a different time than was given to them. And so altogether there were eight of them who missed the ship. And eight of them in Noah's ship, they were shut in. Here, eight of them were shut out from this ship. But the message is same for us. They were all shut out. We're all shut out from the ship. Noah's people were shut out from the ark because of their unbelief. The virgins were shut out because of their hypocrisy. And this young couple along with the other passengers were shut out because of the presumption. It should be our prayer. Let us be aware of these three sins. Unbelief, hypocrisy, and presumption. Any of these sins would keep us out of heaven. Keep us out of enjoying the communion with our Savior, our Creator. But thank God, we still have the heavenly ark docked at the earthly port with the doors open to take as many as would be willing to enter in that they may be saved. But these doors will not remain forever because God's mercy has its limit. Let us enter into this heavenly ark without delay. 
For we do not know when and how soon the ship would leave the earthly shore to the heavenly. It is time to be on board, shut in with the Lord spiritually, as Noah and all the men and women of faith had been through a daily surrender and a closer walk with God, strengthened by prayer and Bible study. May God bless each one of us to this end. Amen. 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 It's good for us to just say those who are past who are not unmute. Can you unmute to say amen to the message we have heard today? Amen. 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 Praise God for that. I'd like to thank Pastor Christopher very much for his message of hope to us. It was also a message of warning for us not to become too comfortable, too complacent, too um, set in our ways. Because this sort of thing causes problems. And from the examples which he has given, we can see <coughs> sorry, we can see that it led to destruction. So therefore I would like to thank him very much for coming and speaking to us this afternoon. And uh, help us to realize and to see our condition and therefore thank you again pastor for your message to us at this time we'll close our service with the hymn 212 it is almost time for the lord to come
we bow our heads for prayer. A merciful Father in heaven, we thank thee for speaking to us this morning, this afternoon, warning us that we are living in the last days of this earth's history. We do not know, Lord, how soon the Lord Jesus will come to this earth to take his waiting and faithful ones to his eternal kingdom. Help us, Lord, to be prepared every day of our lives. Help us to be locked in with thee, not only today, but every day, every of our life, as Noah had been, as the faithful men and women of the Bible had been locked with thee, within thee, they walked with you. Help us to have the similar experience, Lord, with thee, that we may enjoy the fellowship with thee, that we may be prepared for that soon coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may not be left out, but would be caught up with thee to the heaven above to live with you forever and ever. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, commune and, and the blessed communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us now and evermore. Amen. 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 Thank you one more time. Thank you. Thank you one more time, Pastor Christopher, for that message of hope to us.